Man, beautiful Saturday walking session as usual. Actually, I love to do vlog when I'm walking, man. That's when all the the thinking flows goes by. Yeah, I get the most creative. But today's topic is um, how, to, how, how, how to start a, a micro franchise business model. Um, you know, uh, because that's, I think, at least in Africa, I think it's the future. Uh, but before I, I get started, I want to talk a little bit about what my franchise idea came about. So um, A-Red was built on the micro franchise business model. Of course, the foundation is franchising, which is uh, uh, which most of you guys know. If you don't know, I'll talk to you a little bit about it. But uh, early 2000, was it? Uh, I think it was uh, 06 or 07, 2006 and 07. That's when I first came across uh, franchising. And uh, that's when my first interest of franchising uh, grew. And um, I, was, I was subscribing to uh, Entrepreneur Magazine. For those who don't know, Entrepreneur Magazine is the biggest entrepreneurship magazine in the world, they're based in the States. And they had, they always, and they still do, they had a section for franchising, top 500 franchising. So I started studying about franchising and I started falling in love with the business model. I mean, it's, it was amazing. Yeah, guys, now, now you can buy into a business, uh, to a business model. And, uh, you know, you have a support system. You're buying a name, well, you're buying, you're leasing a name, you're getting uh, training on the know how, uh, you're getting support. You don't have to find a supplier, don't have to worry about how to do the business. You can do your, your background check, any idea you may have. Uh, you can share with them. It's it's a partnership, you know, and 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 that's what I love about uh, franchising, you know. And uh, so I started reading about it. I started educating myself about franchising. That was way before A Red, way before <clears throat> me decided to come back home. <clears throat> so the plan was to buy a franchise business. At that time, it was a coffee shop. And the name, and I, I spent, I think, uh, 30 days researching what sector would I want to be in because it is franchising in every sector, in auto uh, business, I think, in housing, real estate, uh, in all kind of different uh, uh, sector. But uh, what interests me the most was coffee, obviously. Uh, coffee is the best. Uh, what well, had the best return or, or that I've seen the best return of investment and uh, uh, <clears throat> coffee was also a high margin business type even then even now for a long time so so it's gonna be um, so this is what I look at and uh, I check coffee as as one of the the interesting business to do and um, so I searched all the franchising in coffee and one coffee shop or one coffee business, a franchise business that caught my eyes was Badass Coffee. Man, check it out, man. That, that, that company, the name alone was, uh, was banging, man. I was like, Badass Coffee, that sounds like me, man. You know, that sounds, uh, I'm, a, I'm a rebel by nature. I like names that shock. I like, I like, you know, I like, I like those, those titles that, that catch your eyes and be like, you know, they, 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 they have this personality or this, this demeanor in them. I'm sure, you know. So, and I started the process. I, I was this close to sign an agreement and everything. And then 2008 crash happened, and then that's when I decided to move back home. But badass coffee, man. I was. Uh, and I love about them was their design. You know, they had an amazing design um, where all design was uh, very unique on the, for each owner, they had a different design for the owner. 
based on the theme you wanted to create and also I designed this African theme and all those things but not to get too deep into it I mean uh, uh, it, it was uh, it was a very interesting but that's when that's when the light bulb uh, hit me uh, when I decided to come back home and I was like well you know when I decided to develop a red and all those things I was amazed by the model of franchising and I, when I started doing research except in South Africa most African countries don't have any franchising laws as a matter of fact franchising um, is almost non-existent and now let me give you some stats for those who don't know French 80% of franchising the success rate if you start a business and the success rate if you start a franchise business you have a better chance you have 80% chance to be successful when you start a franchising than if you start your own business on your own I was like wow that's crazy and it's common sense I mean why is that but it's very simple uh, you know you get that support system you 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 dealing with somebody or, or a company that already has developed the know-how they streamline a lot of the support for you so that made sense why should somebody start their business and 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 go through the learning process learning curve as we call it the the valley of death as it's called in business why should we um, do that when we can buy into an existing business that has a proven track records and has a support system in the back so I was like why can I do that you know and uh, that was the first uh, uh, that was the first uh, idea that came so I developed a red and all but I I developed a red on the backbone of micro franchising that was the initial concept I wanted to make sure that not only you know we offer the services and I, I'm not going to go into detail you can check our website of what we do as a company but micro franchising was the backbone and um, why micro well Africa is a different marketplace right so uh, a franchising model is heavy requires heavy down payment uh, it's a heavy process to qualify um, and uh, there's a lot of legal jargon and all those things and there's laws that you have to obey to uh, obey by because you know uh, in the states you know they have very strong franchising laws but I was like how can I take that model and 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 simplify it in enough for people at the base of the pyramid and I'm gonna tell you how you do it because I believe micro franchising as it stands is the future if you have a model that can scale and you're trying to have a social impact um, at the base of the pyramid micro franchising is the way to go and the only thing similar to micro franchising is um, co-op cooperatives I always pass by this flower joint it's a pot it's all kind of stuff man it's amazing but um yeah how, how can you um, um, you know summarize or, or condense it simplify it I, I would use and make it a micro business well, it's very simple for those who don't know cooperatives um, it's very popular in Africa and Rwanda has, has done a, a great job at it you know it's like <clears throat> you take an industry I'll say the motorcycle which is the most popular one motorcycle industry right and uh, you um, instead of everybody doing their own thing and being their own I mean owning their own motorcycle and and and, and doing their own business you put them all together and they have to follow rules and regulation and they have to pay membership fee right uh, to the co-op that handles different things uh, for them so that's one of the key the co-op but some of the you know there's no perfect business model one of the issue with co-op is 
basically, uh, <coughs> you know, you're part of a group. So um, you can't be creative, do your own thing, and add, a, you know, some, some innovative ideas. And, and, and if you have something creative that can make you more money, you can't do that. You have to follow the rules and regulation of the whole group. And that's what uh, co cooperatives and there's there's co-op in different sector, actually all sector. And it's really also to help people combine their resources to be more efficient and um, you know earn more money. But there's four key things for uh, to build a micro franchisee uh, thing, and that's what I want to talk about uh, because. If you're on a building, you know, there's no roadmap out there that you can uh, get a hold of. So there's four key things that you have to look at. The number one is the recruiting and fee, uh, recruiting process and fee. So you need to come up with a, a way to recruit your micro franchisee. And what you're going to have to do is build a profile. Uh, you know, because you're going to realize that franchising business in general is not for everybody. So you're going to have to create a profile of what your micro franchisee should look like or should have. One thing we've learned is, you know, business is about mindset. So you need to have a, a test, a simple test to evaluate somebody uh, business mindset, how they solve problems and all those things. That's what we do. You need to come up with a micro franchisee fee, how much they're gonna pay. You know, because also you wanna see commitment to their business you want to see uh, you want to make sure that you know th this is not a, a, a what you call a, a donation type of business right so uh, this is not a free ride so you want to make sure they pay on a, on a, a small fee uh, you know to show commitment to show that they're serious about this business that's what we did also so that's the first step. You know, profiling, fee, a marketing campaign you're gonna have to do. When you know your profile, then it's much easier for you to find those people. Uh, the, the, the second thing is uh, the agreement. Very, very important, the agreement. Uh, because the agreement will list all the do's and don'ts. You allow, of course, the fee, the agreement, what it can or cannot do. Uh, and it's very complicated with the mindset of people at the base of the pyramid to develop, a, I mean, to, to, to show an agreement, to explain to them, it's not just developing the agreement. You're gonna have to have it, that's part of the third step, but educate them about what the agreement is about. Uh, and you don't need to, to, to do it from scratch. Download a franchise agreement online and modify it the way you see fit. Then get a lawyer to review it, make sure you're not missing anything, and incorporate it. Uh, but it'll be very important for you to have one. Without it, any issue, you can't document it, and you can't enforce it. So the agreement is key. The third one, man, is the most important. The most, and that's where I messed up big time. And uh, I learned guys the hard way. I want to make sure you understand that the hard way training, 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 training. You got to develop an extensive training program for your micro franchisee before they get started, during. Uh, their micro franchisee journey because again the training is about repetition teach them exactly what they need to do to do this business properly and we develop a three-day training program for them but uh, when I first started I didn't have no training I was just talking to them get started and if you know about micro I mean franchising in general, there is a training program, obviously. But, you know, because it was my crew, I thought, you know, that's, com that's common sense. It's basic now, man. You gotta make sure you develop a very extensive training program. Um, 
and keep updating all the time as you add different services different requirement and all those things you know update that stuff the training guys is key and in the beginning you should develop that outline yourself you know what you need to know you know your business better than anybody and then the the detailing the how you can get a local consultant to do so but make sure that you do the outline yourself uh, because if you get an outsider to do that for you they may not understand your whole business or process but you can do that if they do but it'll cost you even more money but if you don't have a big budget like we didn't we developed the training ourselves and as we we got bigger and uh, we understood our business much better, we improve on the trade. It's a three day extensive about customer service, how they should behave. What are the requirements? What do we expect from them? What they can or cannot do? You know, all that stuff has to be on the training guys. And uh, don't, don't skip that step. If there's one step that you cannot skip, it's that training program guys. It will make or break your business, period. To the end of the, the, the fourth uh, session, I'm getting to the end of the walk, man. It's been two hours, exhausted, but... Anyway, guys, the last thing is also very important, monitoring. You gotta monitor you guys, man. You gotta monitor your micro franchise. Make sure they're doing the work they're supposed to do. Uh, and hold them accountable. It's like any any uh, uh, franchise business model, right? Uh, but the key is now with technology, you can digitize it. So we develop an app to monitor our guys. And I'll walk you to the value chain, right? So we have what we call field operators that monitor our kiosk. So we created barcodes on each kiosk and the mobile app. So the field operator goes to the kiosk take a picture of the QR code and it pull up the agent information, their sales, and automatically based on the algorithm we build, tell them what are the areas they can improve on and give them a credit score. And then the field operator just have to fill up the questionnaire we have already built in and what he's supposed to monitor. So it's a very simple process, but very powerful process because now it gives us an exact real-time picture of what's happening on the ground uh, and how they're performing because one of the problems in scaling is how do you monitor your, your micro franchise as you scale you can't monitor them individually uh, with their handwriting books and all that so try to digitize your ecosystem guys and remember whatever document you develop everything you develop you're not gonna have it the right way the first time. You're gonna have to improve your documentation, change, modify, add some stuff. And I want you to, I wanna end with this. One of the biggest challenge in Africa is scaling. Uh, scaling a business, it's extremely challenging. Franchising or micro-franchising model allow you to do that in a much more cost-effective way. Or you add technology uh, feature on it, you'll be unstoppable. Put some comment below on the YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, if you have some topic or some question you want me to talk about, please don't hesitate. Follow, subscribe on the YouTube channel. I post videos every Mondays. And this channel, as I said, it was very, it's, it's designed to share my knowledge, my expertise, my experience in doing business in Africa. Take care.